Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and today I have an all play video. Yes, I want everyone to play along with me today. So pause the video, jump down to the description box and grab your free pattern of the Hummingbird Mosaic Tile Quilt. Print it out, jump into your craft area and sew along with me today. So back in July in the Creative Crew group, uh, a friend of mine, Kathy, had shared a tile mosaic art quilt that she had just finished. And I'm going to share a picture of it right here. Now, everyone loved this project and we all had questions. And come to find out, Kathy does a blog and she has a very well-written explanation of how she created this little art quilt and pictures to go along. And so I was reading her blog, following the pictures, and I was so intrigued with this method. Kathy uses Steema Seam 2 to create her tile mosaic art quilts. And um, I got to talking to Kathy in the messenger and we decided to collaborate on a project. I said, if I create a pattern, would you play along? If I send it to you, will you make a quilt alongside me so I could display your art quilt in my video? So we've been working on this for a couple of months now because we're both so busy, but finally we have time and we can sit down and create this video with you. So I'm going to be sharing her hummingbird uh, art quilt <laughs> with you. And this is the one that she made uh, using Steema Seam 2 and her method of uh, making these art quilts. And so I'm going to show show you this picture. Isn't that so pretty? Now, I truly believe after reading Kathy's blog that this method, the way that she created this is a wonderful way to do this. However, I'm also a firm believer that there's always more than one way to accomplish anything. And so I sat down and I started playing with fabric and tool and glue <laughs> and freezer paper. And so I created my two in a totally different way, uh, sort of the same concept, but using different materials. And so that's the method that I'm going to show you in this video. And you'll have Kathy's blog to reference if you want to use the Steema Seam too. So there's two different ways that you can do this type of art quilt. And certainly I don't think that those are the only ways that you could do it. You could use heat and bond light. You could use all kinds of stuff. But I'm hoping that with Kathy's blog and this video, it gives you some really great ideas to sit down and create this quilt with us. So let me show you my quilts and then we're going to jump right into it and get started. Um, again, a huge thank you to Kathy. And if you have any questions at all, we would love to try to help you. You can jump down to the comment section below and I would really love it if you gave this video a thumbs up. I would appreciate that a lot. Okay, we're gonna get busy creating something fun today. So grab your pattern and let's go. Getting started here, you'll see that there are two different PDFs in the description box. One is right side up and one is mirror imaged. You can work with either one or you can download both. Today I'm going to be working with the mirror image because I like the hummingbird facing to the left. I've pressed some freezer paper to the back side of some cotton fabric and I have a heat erasing pen to trace my image. If you are using a product like uh, Heat and Bond, you might want to use a water soluble pen and uh, when you're pressing all your little pieces that way you won't lose all of your markings. <laughs> So just using my light box, I'm going to go ahead and trace out my pattern. And you'll see me go through and do the motions of that right here. You could also use a window or a homemade light box. I've seen some really great ideas over on the Creative Crew group for making your own light box. but they definitely make it much easier to see through the freezer paper and the fabric. I'm just gonna go through and trace each one of the little pieces. 
for this pattern. The freezer paper stabilizes the fabric and makes it a lot easier to trace your design. Once you have your whole design traced onto the fabric, we're ready to mark our pattern and this just helps me keep track of all of the tiny little pieces. So what I like to do is just go through the pattern and letter or number them, each one of the individual pieces. Now that you've assigned each one of your pieces a number or letter, you'll see I have some freezer paper scraps. I'm going to trace on the dull side of the freezer paper each one of my individual little pieces. And you can do it this way, or you can bring in a light box, which is way easier, which is what I decide to do here in just a second. <laughs> There, I think that's a little bit easier to see through the freezer paper. So I'm going to trace each one of my individual little pieces. And I'm just using a fine tip marker to do that. And once you have your piece traced, make sure to assign it the number that you've given each piece. And so you can keep track of all of these individual tiny little pieces. So you'll see I just go through and trace each one of the pieces on the pattern. And then we're going to heat up the iron and pull out some pretty fabrics that we want to use. And we will meet at the pressing board. Once you've traced all of your pieces, I like to separate my pieces by different colors. I have my fabrics that I'd like to use and I'm going to bring them over and I'm going to put the pretty side facing up and my pattern piece with the shiny side facing the fabric and I'm going to press this. Now I'm using a high cotton setting with no steam. It only takes a second to press that pattern piece right onto the pretty side of the fabric. These kinds of projects are great for using up different scraps and so I save every little scrap that I get in my studio. Once you've pressed all of your pieces, you can go ahead and cut each one out directly on the line. Once you start cutting out all of your pieces, make sure to keep them all to the side because some of these pieces are tiny, tiny, tiny and you don't want to lose them. So I'll go through, cut out all of my pieces. And then we're ready to start some fun stuff. Now you'll see I have all of my little individual pieces cut out. I'm using my pattern as a reference map. And I have my fabric with the image traced onto it and the freezer paper is still adhered to the back. So now comes some fun creative stuff. I feel like we've gotten all the preliminary work done and now the fun begins. So I have myself some water for my brushes. I'm using just some cheaper crafting brushes. And for this technique, I'm using some wet glue. I'll be using the Aline's Tacky Glue, but you can also use glues like Elmer's Glue All and School Glue. So what I like to do is place a little bit of glue in sections. I like to work at one piece at a time and I apply little dots of glue all throughout the piece. Pretty liberally from one end to the other. 
And let's see, let me find my piece that we're working on. And I'll take one of my brushes and I spread out those dots of glue so that the glue is nice and flat. Now you don't have to worry about it exactly going to the edge of your piece because we will be applying a piece of tool over top of the entire quilt top and that will secure all of our pieces forever. <laughs> now you can apply your pieces as one large great big piece. So you could just put this piece right into place. But sometimes I like to break up the larger pieces and make them look like they're made out of individual tiles. So you'll see me cut apart the larger sections. And I like to try to keep them in order <laughs> when I cut them apart. And some of the pieces I will trim off just a sliver off of one end or the other. And that allows for a little bit of space in between these pieces and gives the appearance of individual pieces of tile with grout in between them. When I'm placing my pieces, I like to start with the shapes of the piece that have specific areas just like this piece here. I like to put those into place. And then I can go back and fill in the other areas. Just like you see me doing here. Again, I'm just going to trim off a little sliver off the end and shorten up that piece. And a little bit more. <laughs> and that gives some separation in between my pieces. Now I'm just going to finger press all of those pieces down. And for now I'll leave the freezer paper on, although I have a little bit of glue on my fingers and it's pulling at the freezer paper. I'll usually leave the freezer paper on until I'm all done because I like to have a big reveal at the end. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and glue all these pieces down into place. And uh, I'll just let you watch and follow along. And I'm speeding this part of the video up, uh, let's see, eight times faster because altogether it took about 27 minutes to glue all my pieces into place. I always feel like I should be saying something or playing music in these parts, but most of you I've heard do not like the music in the videos. So I'm just going to be quiet and let you enjoy watching me put all these pieces down into place. And then we're going to let them dry. Now that all of our pieces are dry, I'm just using a straight pin and picking off the little pieces of freezer paper. I think this is one of the most satisfying parts of doing this. You'll notice I did not do a black circle fabric dot for his eye. I will come in with a fabric marker and place his eye into place.
Now let's think about the design of our art quilt. You could keep the background all one solid type of fabric, just like I did in that quilt, or you can get really creative and do designs within your background like I did on this art quilt. So here's where I drew in on my pattern the design for the quilt that you see here. Just with a marker I went in and drew in the pattern that I wanted to follow. So I think we're going to do something like that with this quilt. So I'm going to bring back my pattern and I'm going to draw in some sun rays or some rays of <laughs> light coming through the background of my art quilt. Now this is certainly optional, but I'm going to start with a border all the way around my art quilt. I think that gives a nice little finish. And what's really fun is you can take the same exact pattern and make them a million different ways. <laughs> And Kathy's uh, art quilt, she changed the shape of her quilt completely into a hexagon, which I thought was really thinking outside the box. So I've added a border, and now I'm just going to break up my background to give the appearance of some light shining through the sky. Now I'll go in and just fill in some dots in this area. It's just helps me keep a better visual of the different sections. I'm going to do this two more times, and so I'm going to speed this part up for you. We will try to keep things moving pretty quickly. Just think of all the possibilities you could do with this pattern. So here are my three sections that I will do a different color and now we can move on. Now that we've modified our pattern, I'm going to go ahead and bring that back to the light box one more time. I'm going to bring in our fabric and line up our pattern with our fabric design. And with the heat erasing pen, once more I'm going to draw in the lines and design that we've added. Now if you are using, uh, if you're going to keep your background all the same, then you can absolutely skip this part. But this will help us keep our design and give us a guide to fill in all of our background area. Once you've made those marks, you can go ahead and pull out some pretty fabrics that you want to use as your background fabrics. Now we're going to start the fun part of filling in our background areas. Now I have a couple different ways that I like to do that, and so I'm going to start with the first way. I just cut myself off a piece of fabric. There's nothing on the back side of this fabric. And I take a rotary cutter and I cut long thin strips and all of my strips are not uniform. They're all different widths. You could use a ruler if you wanted to make them all the same. And then I cut the other way creating lots of little individual fabric tiles. Now that I have all of my little fabric tiles, we can bring in our design and we're going to work together on this top section first. So I have my brushes and my water to keep the glue wet on my brush and I have my glue. 
So I like to do this in different sections to keep the glue from drying. I'll add a little bit of glue and then I can pick up my tiles and arrange them within that shape. This is a lot of fun. You can just put on some music and have fun. <laughs> it's actually quite relaxing. Sometimes you might have to cut little pieces to get them to fit. And again, I'll work one little section at a time. Filling in as we go. I think this process is a lot of fun. We have that top sun ray all done and we can remove those pieces. And now I'm going to show you how you can use freezer paper to fill in some of your sections as well. If you want to be a little bit more exact and precise, you can trace your pieces with freezer paper, just like we did with the tree and the bird. And then you can cut those pieces apart and fill in your areas that way. So once I've traced this second ray of sun, a little bit easier to use our <laughs> to use our pattern once we've done this for the second ray of sun I'm going to fuse that onto a different fabric I'll cut those out and then we can actually glue these pieces into place I'm back from fusing my fabric and cutting out my pieces. And now we can just repeat the process. We're going to add glue section by section and fill in the second part of sunshine ray. Ray of sunshine, sunshine ray. <laughs> This larger section, I'm going to cut into smaller pieces. and fill in that section just like that. Repeating that process for this third ray of sunshine coming through our quilt, I'm going to fill in this area as well. This time I will cut my larger section, section number two, into long strips. I think that'll be fun just to vary up the different shapes within the quilt. And I think both of the methods that I showed you, the very top sun ray is a lot of fun. And so is this method here that I'm doing. But this way is a little bit more controlled <laughs> and uh, tends to be a lot easier fitting in more exact shapes. So 
So I'm just going to cut these pieces into longer strips of tile. And we will fill in all of this section. If you're worried about using the glue in your quilt, just keep in mind that all of this glue will be completely dry by the time we bring this to the sewing machine. And so you won't have to worry about the machine getting all yucky with the wet glue because it's all going to be dry. And then it's much uh, like working with fusibles like Heat and Ball Light. It has the same kind of consistency and it's pretty flexible. Now that we have our brighter rays of light coming through, I'm going to work on the border fabric. So just like we did with the very first ray of light coming through our quilt, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and cut some tiles out of this darker fabric. I'm going to work my way around the outside of the quilt and glue in these sections. I'm going to speed this up really fast so we can speed up this video a little bit. And I'm not worried about my tiles being ununiform around the edge because at the end we will clean up the edges and trim away and make the edge of our quilt all nice and pretty. Now we're ready to fill in the remaining sections of our background. So to do that, I brought in my pattern and I labeled each one of those sections and I traced them onto freezer paper and then I cut them apart. And those are the pieces that you see there. So we're ready to go ahead and fill in all of these pieces. Now again, I'm going to speed this up really fast. I want you to be able to see the whole process but not actually sit for the whole time that it took me to do this. So I figured for these bigger sections of background, instead of cutting them into smaller little tiny pieces, I would leave them whole and fill them in that way. Of course, on your quilt, you could do all kinds of stuff. And I think that's one of the things that I love about our quilts the most is because really there's no rules. <laughs> it's all subject to the person who is making the quilt. Now that all of our pieces are dry, I want to show you what we do next with our quilt. We're going to layer a piece of tool over the top. There's all different kinds of tool that you can use. On this one, I used this darker piece. Let's see what that looks like up close. And what this does is it keeps all of those raw edges in place and lets us do some free motion work on the sewing machine. On this one, I used a glittery tool, just like this. And for the quilt that we're making together, I purchased a beige tool from Joann's. And we're just going to cut off a section that covers the entire top of the piece we're working with. First, I'm going to go ahead and trim off some extra bits of my quilt. And now we can remove the freezer paper from the back. I have a backing fabric and a thin layer of 80-20 batting and my quilt top on top. I'll lay the tool in place and I'm going to pin all of these layers together and then we can bring that to the sewing machine and start quilting.
We are at the sewing machine now and we're ready to go ahead and quilt our quilt. So you'll see I have my free motion foot on. I have the feed dogs lowered on my machine and I have all of my settings ready to go. I'm going to bring up the bobbin thread and we're going to free motion quilt around each one of our little fabric tiles. I'm going to show you here the type of thread that I'm using. Uh, one of my favorite quilting threads is from AK Trading Company. Uh, I'll put a link in the description box below and you can see what that thread looks like right here. So I'm just going to go around each one of my little fabric tile pieces. I put on some music and just enjoy my time at the sewing machine. I'll remove the pins as I get closer to them. and just work my way around the quilt. Now we'll say there's a lot of um, traveling when you quilt one area and then have to travel back through that area to get to another place that isn't quilted yet. But this is a pretty small art quilt and so it's pretty easy to maneuver your way around. I have a glove on. Usually I put a glove on one hand <laughs> and uh, that helps give me some traction of moving my piece around. And this is pretty much just like drawing with a needle and thread. I always think smaller quilt projects like this give you the perfect opportunity to get some practice in and doing your free motion work. You can go as fast or as slow as you're comfortable with. And just work your way around each one of the pieces. I usually like to try to work starting in the center of the quilt and then work my way out. Although here with this quilt, I start in the center and I work my way around one of the wings and then I start sewing the border <laughs> or quilting the border. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up because I want you to see me quilt the entire quilt. And again, this part took about 30 minutes altogether. So what are your thoughts about music playing in the background during certain long sections of silence? I would love to hear your comments down below on if you like music playing or if you'd rather sit in silence and just watch. <laughs> Comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say.
Now here's a stinker. I started trimming off my quilt and thought the camera was running and it wasn't. <laughs> I usually have a goof up during filming each one of my videos. So here's what our quilt looked like before I trimmed it off. And I've trimmed off those sections and we'll trim off this last section together. So I'm just really squaring up my quilt using the lines on my mat and my ruler and trimming away and making all of the edges nice and pretty. Just like this. <laughs> We'll take a look at the back. I think that looks pretty fantastic. I used a contrasting thread so you could see the design on the back. And this is what it looks like up close from the front. The beige tool really blends in and gives a nice finish. Now we're going to sew the edges of our quilt. To finish off this particular art quilt, I am using an overcasting foot and some embroidery thread. I'm going to put a picture of the embroidery thread I'm using right down here in the corner. And I'm just going to sew along the edge of my quilt and give a nice little clean finished edge all the way around. Now you could make a binding, a separate binding and bind your quilt. You could also use the back of your quilt and flip it over to the front and bind your quilt that way as well. You could do any kind of decorative stitch around the edge of your quilt to finish it off. You could do laces and trims. You could couch some yarn onto the edge of your quilt. There's so many different possibilities with an art quilt. For this one, I will just be using an overcasting stitch and some pretty blue thread. <laughs> I'll work my way all the way around the quilt and then, you know what, we're all done. So I'm just gonna bring you along as I do two sides of this and then I'll finish up off camera. I just finished sewing all the edges of my art quilt and it is all done. I think that's a really fast and easy way to finish off your little art quilts. And I love it. I, I absolutely love this uh, technique and the results you get. And it really does look like it's a tile mosaic masterpiece. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. So this is the one that we created together. And again, I'll show you the other two that I did while I was experimenting with different ways of doing the tile effect with the fabric. And here's this other one. This one I used the backing for the binding fabric and that's another great way to finish off your art quilts. And I'm going to share again uh, Kathy's picture of hers and what she did really fun with her hummingbird pattern. And I absolutely love that. Thank you so much, Kathy, for playing along and collaborating with me on this project. I found your blog post very informative. Uh, it was very well written, and I love the picture descriptions as you go through. Again, Kathy used Steam a Seam 2, and if you're interested in checking out her method, then I will have a link to her blog in the description box below. Also, I'm going to put a link to the Creative Crew group because if you make this, I would love to see your pictures. Everyone over there would love to see your creations. And so you can jump over there after making your hummingbird mosaic tile quilt and share pictures with us. We would love to hear about it and see it. And if you do a different, entirely different method, we would love to really hear about it. 
So also, I wanted to share with you, because I had a dear friend drop off a quilt top to me the other day, and I quilted that top for her, and she saw this hanging up on my project wall, and she fell in love with it, and she's a watercolor artist, and so um, she sent me this card. <laughs> so not only can you make little art quilts with this, imagine the possibilities. She did this in watercolors and made a card and sent it to me. So I absolutely love that. Thank you so much, Susan. This is going to be displayed in my studio. So yeah, just think about the possibilities that you could do with this pattern. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. And uh, yeah, I look forward to creating something really fun with you really soon. Have an awesome day. Bye, everybody.